In South Africa, he wasn't accepted because of his colour. He wasn't accepted by the white guys. And I said to my wife, you know what? I'm going to try to make a move. I wanted to win, and I wanted to win for a new country, New Zealand. I was a very sickly boy when I was a baby, and I caught double pneumonia. So when my mother baptized me, said I was the most sickliest child of her three children, and uh, she named me her precious son. I was born in South Africa in 1936. When my father died, my mother had to take us to uh, the welfare society for us to be looked after. Well, South Africa, at that time, well, I, I knew about apartheid, but we couldn't do anything about it. The hardship side, you can remember that well. That could not get out of your mind. Somewhere between March and May 1953, I was running a gym in South Africa. And uh, this little guy walked in, all four foot nine of him. He had a certain aura about him. He didn't look cocky, but he looked dynamic, for want of a better word. And uh, when I looked at the size and the shape, he would have made a perfect weightlifter. One of these days, he said to me, Precious, uh, this Saturday we're having a bit of a competition. I want you to come there and lift some weights there. So I got there and no colors was allowed there. When this white fellow came into there and saw me, and he said, get out, get out of here. But I begged them, I said, no, you know, you've got to just let people see him lifting. Okay, he can lift, but he's not allowed to be part of the competition. Precious would sit there uh, as the only black man there and wait for the weight to go up. And when it got to your level, you'd put your hand up and you would enter the, the, the competition. And the flower weights lifted, the next one, bantam weights, and then the feather weights. Now everybody's looking at Precious because he hasn't put his hand up to lift and people are giggling because they think he's an idiot and he can't understand how this competition works. Then the lightweights and the white Precious put his hand up and the people laughed. Then I went and lift. And straight away, I broke the national record immediately. I thought I'm defying what the South African government was trying to do. If they think we are inferior, this is what I've got to prove that we are not inferior. By the time you see this film, this vast arena will be packed to capacity with more than 110,000 spectators and the pick of the world's athletes. When the Olympics took part, I was the best weightlifter in South Africa at that time already and I was never chosen. And I said to my wife, you know what? I'm gonna to try to make a move. And uh, that's when we encouraged it and I got in touch with the blokes over in England. So three months later, Precious was in England with a United Kingdom passport. <laughs> England was a great escape for him. So we all followed. My childhood was with my mum. Mum was the carer, dad clearly was being a sportsman. When I was in England now, I started going to the gym. So all records there, I broke straight away. I was very happy because I took it this way. There is a country who took me open arms, not because of my color, 
my religion took me on for what I was. When Dad was awarded the MBE, I think the recognition at that point was, this is real. This is not just my dad doing a sport, going to work. He was a force. He was being recognised for all that, that we missed out on. A name now famous and synonymous with weightlifting, gold medals at the last three Commonwealth Games. The sickly boy has become a seasoned world traveler. New Zealand is his latest port of call. If it wasn't through the Commonwealth Games in 1974, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today talking because New Zealand was so like a magnet to me. They just caught me and pulled me, dragged me into New Zealand. Of the thousands of top-line international sportsmen who have come to New Zealand, few, if any, have captured the public's enthusiasm and uh, admiration as this diminutive South African-born sportsman. A photographer's dream, he's never too busy to pose, and when he does, he's the centre of attraction. I decided, well, if these people love me so much, why shouldn't I stay here? And then, of course, the media got hold of me. There was a lot of excitement around moving here and living here. There was a kind of a very mild frenzy about it. I was going to retire, but I didn't retire because I had one more games to do for New Zealand. He must make this lift. Kept the elbows well out of the reach of his knees. And throw this for the roof. He's made it. Precious McKenzie said all along that he was going to make it four. He very nearly didn't. I promise him I'll come back with a four. And uh, all my fans down the South Islands, right up to the North Island. You name any city and town in New Zealand, I have been the guest speaker. And the blessing they've given me, come back with a fourth gold medal and become a Kiwi. And I can feel now that I'm a real Kiwi. I wanted to win, and I wanted to win for a new country, New Zealand, because when my mother said to me once, where you want it, you go. Where you don't want it, stay away. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. He loves people. He loves their company. He adores the adulation. He thrives on it. And I noticed that when he worked in the gym and got talking to him and uh, realising that this is certain, something very dynamic inside him, sort of, you know. And I think if you've met him, You'll agree with me, even to this day. He's in his 80s, but by God, he's not going to sort of settle for second best. I have a workout every day. It gives me health. I could never win a medal if I wasn't fit enough. I've been looking at him differently in his old age, thinking that that child who was relatively impoverished and had a terrible upbringing, that this is what he turned out to be like. And it gives you belief, you know, that it can be done. I never made precious what he was or what he is. He was always precious. But Ella, I feel so pleased that he walked into my gym. That was God's gift to me. 
You can see it had an impact on me, the little bugger. <laughs> My philosophy in life is stand up to be seen, speak up to be heard, but shut up to be appreciated. <laughs>